Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video with me, Katleho from Just Katleho. I hope you are subscribed. And if you're not, please do. Welcome to the channel. Also click that notification bell so that you know each and every single time I upload. You're gonna get a ping pong on your phone every single time I upload and you will know to watch the videos. So welcome. We're doing another advice with Kat today. If you don't know, I do quite a few of these and I will link some of them down in the description box below but this time around I wanted to do the relationship edition so ask your ask let's do it based on the candid with cat relationship edition now we're going to be doing the advice with cat relationship edition so I didn't really get that many uh, questions but I will try and get through the ones that I do or did get as fast as I can because I am quite tired <laughs> as fast as I can but as honestly and openly as I can too so let's get into the first question so the first question is why is it so hard to find someone who really loves you and is scared to lose you this is deep and it's honest and I it's raw I get it I get it it's hard and I feel like it's because of the social structure that surrounds dating and relationships nowadays let's be honest it is a cesspool let's be honest people are just not honest with one another when it comes to relationships there's cheating there's this there's people wanting you know unrealistic expectations from a relationship there's people not being honest with themselves about what they want from relationships and how they plan on achieving it or getting it let's be honest it is a mess in the dating world it is a mess trying to find somebody who's just going to be honest and straightforward with you and just be loyal and trustworthy and all of that because we live in a society where relationships are scandalized we live in a society where you know things are projected about what relationships should be or what they should look like that makes it really hard to find someone who's going to love you for you and be with you for you um, as much as we all have our requirements and we all have our preferences and standards as to what we want from relationships it's really really hard to find someone who will match that or even do better or also somebody that will meet those um, requirements but also you can compromise with so they might not meet everything but you can compromise with it's really tough and I do not have the answer for that I really would love to know why it's so hard but I think it is largely based on the society that we live in now and how we've commercialized um, certain types of relationships as being the end all and be all as to what relationships should look like, feel like, be like. And um, until we can get to the crux of the root of, you know, this is not what a relationship, a relationship should actually fulfill this part of your life and not necessarily what we're seeing on social media. That's my two cents. Um, another question is, would you go back to a guy who cheated on you and claimed he was only trying to create a tepu? No. No, 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 no. No, no. Have I gone back to someone who's cheated on me before? Yes, I have. Um, was it a big mistake? Absolutely. It was a big mistake because it said a lot about how I felt about myself. Um, I didn't deem myself worthy enough or didn't feel m to be worthy enough to be in a relationship where I'm not cheated on. I felt like I know this person. I've already built a life with this person. Let me try. Yes, I got cheated on. But the reality about being cheated on is that it changes you forever. You might love that person. You might want to be with that person so much. You might want to love on them and whatever and try and move past the fact that they cheated on you, but it makes you a different person. You are a lot more snappier. You don't trust them. You can, you can say all you like about trying to earn that trust back or whatever, but it is damaged forever. And um, you're just more snappier. You don't trust their movements. You don't trust yourself around them anymore. And it just changes the dynamic of the relationship. It's no longer fun anymore. Now you just feel like you're... You know, you're just coasting along and, and, and because you love this person, you're sticking around. Um, so no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back to a cheating partner and having found out that he's cheated, I wouldn't go back. However, and also even worse, creating a tepu 
for me, forget it. Yeah, one of this in Seleku life and having five wives and three wives and ten wives and step stepu it's not for me. Me, I'm already too much by myself. How the hell am I gonna deal with somebody else in my relationship? We can catch me outside. I'm not gonna do that. So no, no to that. No. To all of it. No. Uh, why don't people talk about how damaging talking stages are? Uh, yes, I'm young, but please. I don't know in what way you mean they are damaging. I would have loved for you to elaborate this a little bit more because I, I don't know. And I can't answer from a point where I don't know. If I don't understand what question is being posed to me and in what regard or in what instance, then I can't really answer it. Um, talking stages are important. What I will say is that talking stages are extremely important because talking stages are the stages where you get to know the kind of person that you're dealing with. You get to know their personality. You get to know their attitude towards life and money and love and relationships and partners and people of the opposite sex and, and, and people who are not of their um, sexual or you know physical preference or whatever you get to see how they interconnect with the world and you get to see that a lot in the talking stages so i do think they are important damaging i'm not so sure in what context you mean so i'm not going to answer that one however i do think talking stages are very important if you're present for them you don't just go into a talking stage and think, ah, well, this is the part and parcel of the process. We need to talk. Uh, no, 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 no. You take talking stages very, very seriously. Very seriously. Um, hi, Cece. Hi, girl. How do you encourage a potential boyfriend who is working for a private company to start a business? Well, that's a hard one because not everyone can start businesses. Not everyone is... Um, you know, I feel like everybody can be an entrepreneur. That's, that's my personal thing. I feel like this notion that no entrepreneurs are born, not made. I feel like entrepreneurs can be made. And if you feel like this person or your partner, your potential boyfriend can be in a place where they could do well by starting their own private business, then talk to them about it. I really don't know uh, how much more I can add because again, this person is a potential boyfriend, so they're not a boyfriend. So what can you actually say that might cement the fact that you want him to see that he can start a private a business by himself and do well in it? What can you add to that if this person is just a potential boyfriend? Are they your friend? Have you been with them for a long period of time? Do you know them really, really well? What was the story? Uh, but if you feel that they can, then all you need to do is encourage that person. You encourage them to see what you can actually do better here. You can actually start a business with this and actually be successful with it. But show them how. Um, I feel like with certain things, don't just... Don't just say, you can do so well, whatever. Kind of show them, lead the way and lead the, be the light that says, okay, I think you can do well with this because you're so good at A, B, C, Z. That kind of thing. Um, oof. The guy I'm dating is great and everything, but I feel like I'm not in love with him. Sometimes I'm happy when he's around and sometimes I'm not, but I don't want to lose him. Whew in love with him that's fine i mean you're in the dating stages uh but it is really important to be in love with someone that you maybe potentially want to build a future with or want to be in a relationship with um you can love somebody and not be in love with them relationships work very differently relationships are really weird right you get through moments where you love your person but you're not in love with them and that's normal that's normal you're not constantly in love with your person. You might be in love with them this month, and then next month they piss you off. But you still love them. You still want to be with them, you know? And I can see that you sense there's a fear in losing this person, which is good, because then that means that you care about that person enough. You love them enough. But it is important for a intimate relationship to be in love with that person. If, if, if there isn't an in love moment ever, and you've been dating this person for a while, are you ever going to be in love with him? You know, what is it that you maybe also ask yourself the question that what does it take 
for me to fall in love with someone? What, what do I need to see or experience or feel for me to deem that I'm in love with this person? And if you're not feeling them, then you're not in love with that person. And chances are you might not ever be in love with that person, but you love them. You can love someone and care for them, but not be in love with them. And is that, I mean, is it worth it then to pursue a relationship with someone you don't think you'll ever be in love with? I think you have to ask yourself those questions. Really, really important questions to ask yourself. Oh, she continues to say, no guy has ever loved me like he does, but I, Hakimufili. Then you just don't. I feel like you've answered your question there. Um, he says we are partners, but he doesn't want a title to it. Is it a red flag? Yes. 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 Titles are important. Titles show you where boundaries are, where boundaries can be crossed, can't be crossed, blah, blah, blah. Titles are important with someone who you feel you're in a relationship with. So if they're saying that you're my partner, but yeah, nah, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to call it anything. You know what I'm saying? I don't want it. I don't want to, I don't like to put names to things. I don't like to put titles to things. Then you're always going to be living in that limbo space where you're wondering to yourself, what are we then? You know, what are we to each other? He's saying that I'm his partner, but he refuses to say that I'm his boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, what? And listen, I view partner as somebody who is my boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. This is somebody that I have an intimate relationship with. So when he says partner, what is his definition of partner? Because I would automatically assume that a partner is someone that you are in an intimate relationship with. Uh, yeah, no, he might have to just, you might have to have that conversation with him to say like, bruh, what are we to each other? What, which one, what's going on here? Let's, let's talk about it. Um, but no, it, for me personally, that would be a red flag. That would be a red flag. My boyfriend in an argument told me that I don't have a great body. Told me that I don't even have a great body. Grounds for a breakup, right? Are you still asking? Are you still asking? Let's read that again, okay? Let's read that again, okay? Let's read it again. My boyfriend in an argument told me that I don't even have a great body. Grounds for a breakup, right? Yes, I would. I definitely would. Because for someone like me, I want to know that you find me attractive, even in my body, even at my heaviest or my lightest or my this or my that. I want to know that you find me attractive. So why are you with me? As much as you might be with me for my personality, but let's not lie, okay? My hips don't lie. You can catch me outside with that because how someone looks, looks the danger. What a danger is it's here. How someone looks is also very important because that's what attracts you to somebody initially before you get to know their personality and all of that. I'm trying to look at you and be attracted to you. So if you're telling me you don't have a great body, can you imagine? You don't even have a great body. Can you imagine what goes through your head now every single time that you're gonna have to get undressed in front of him, every single time that you're gonna have to be intimate with that person? What's gonna go through your head? How are you ever going to feel safe and your body feel safe around the person who speaks to you in that manner? No. Grounds for a dismissal. According to me, according to me, I'm not saying break up with the person, but according to me, yes. It's grounds for dismissal. My boyfriend once cheated on me and he apologized. So we fix things. I don't want to believe. I do want to believe that he has changed, but my instincts are telling me that he'll do it again. I don't want to go through. I want to go through his phone, but I know that you, what you said about going through their phones help. <sighs> You see, it's really hard when somebody has cheated on you because that is the first thing that you're going to want to do. You're going to want to go through their phone. You're going to be antsy every time that they're on their phone and they're not looking at you and this and that and the other. You're antsy. You're wondering. This is the thing about making the commitment to try again after somebody has cheated on you. There are certain things that are going to crop up that you never felt or experienced before. Hence why I said earlier on in the video that it's gonna change you. It's going to change you. If somebody has cheated on you once before, they're going to do it again. I can tell you that for free. They're going to do it again. I don't know 
what it eats i must say or whatever hurry hey no maybe they've changed maybe they've this yeah maybe there's exceptions to the rule but a lot of the time we're all the rule okay we're all the rule if somebody cheats on you you need to consider how when somebody cheats on you they don't respect you they're not loyal to you they don't respect you they don't see your worth and what you bring to the space to the relationship and if they don't see it when will they ever and how do you believe that they won't cheat on you again so they suddenly cheated on you and they were faced with the potential of losing you and then you decided to fix it instead they're going to see you as a Popeye instead you like seriously seriously you can catch me outside they're going to see you as a Popeye they're going to see you oh well she forgave me before so she's going to do it again I forgave before and when I found out it happened again I left so I knew her ah 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 uh, here, I'm being very much disrespected here. I'm never going to be respected here, ever. I wanted to be, you know, benefit of the doubt. I don't know why. It's messed up, okay? I don't know why we do the things that we do sometimes. But I want to be like, okay, it's fine. We've been together a long time, whatever, whatever. I don't want to start something with someone new. I don't want to do this. And he's sorry and all of that. And I got cheated on again. Probably multiple times. I just found out about the one. So, no. No, going through their phone, baby girl, that I do not advise at all. I don't, I don't. Um, we've been together for four years. Here's the thing about going through the phone, okay? You don't have to go through your partner's phone, but your partner will show you who they don't mind. Like if they're going to show you a video on their phone, they'll show you the video on their phone without them getting antsy about what might potentially crop up or whatever that you can hold their phone if their phone rings you can answer the phone whatever but don't actively go through someone's phone it really is an invasion of privacy there's bank accounts on your phone there's banking apps there's a password details there's messages from family members about family issues and all of that now somebody's going through all of that because basola you're cheating no no it's just not right it's just not right no, no. We've been together for four years. He lives... Huh? We've been together for four years. Lives with baby mama wife. Found out year two. Says he's gonna leave till today, cat. Hi, bo. Hi, bo. Hi, bo. Hi, bo. Naleti. <coughs> so you knew. Or you found out in year two. And you stayed. And now it's four years later. He says he's going to leave till today. He's not going to leave his wife for you. He won't. I can tell you there might be exceptions to the rule. You hear my chat? They kind, there might be exceptions to the rule. But a lot of the time, it's the rule. Everybody's the rule. No one is going to leave their partner for you. No, no, no. No. If they want to leave, they're leaving for other reasons. Not necessarily particularly for you. No, no. No, your boat. No, no. Row your boat gently down the stream and get out of his life. Honestly. And I know that that is hard. It's easier said than done. I know it. But what justice are you doing to yourself? Four years. Lives with his baby mama wife. I don't like baby mama. I don't like that word. Lives with his baby mama wife. Four years, you found out in year two. Two years later, he's still saying, I'm going to leave. Really? Really? You're doing yourself a huge injustice. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say leave, but you're doing yourself a huge injustice here. What do you think about Chloe and Tristan? I don't think about Chloe and Tristan. Uh, I think about, I think that Chloe, shame men. Shame. Gori, you've been made an international social media, international Popeye by a man who is just hell-bent on continuously hurting you over and over again. And he wants to come back with an I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry and continues to hurt you, continues to make you look like a clown on these streets. Tristan ain't shit. He really is the bottom of the barrel. I don't care if somebody is the father of your child. I don't care. But he's the bottom of the barrel. Because he has 
openly been out with these people, seen at clubs, sex tape videos came out, this, 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 and you still, ah! Chloe Waikata, hey, catch me outside. Sometimes Waikata, 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 Waikata. Yeah. I'm still stuck on that X that's not good for me. I get sucked in, help, I need to move on. Woo, I, I, don't I know them. <laughs> don't I know them. Let me tell you. Um, the only way you can move on is to cut, delete, block. Do not associate yourself. The moment that person has access to you, you will never move on. Yeah, you will never. Now I have blocked, cut, deleted. I don't want to hear a nothing. I don't care to hear a nothing regarding any of my exes. I don't care to hear a nothing. I, 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 I have a block it. I don't, even on the day where you could be like thinking, yo, I wonder how this person is doing, or where are they, or this and that and the other, and blah, blah, blah. Even on those days, even on those days, no. The only way you can do justice, cut, delete numbers, block, WhatsApp, messages, emails, blog. That's the only way you can do yourself the justice of actually even attempting or trying to move on. Otherwise, once they still have access to you, forget it. Even you are not going to move on, my darling. You are not. You are not. Yeah, as no. much as, I, it's hard not to get jealous. As much as I try, some people are too friendly with our partner. Girl, you better catch me outside. Yes. Uh-huh. Go on, why I'm too friendly. Too friendly. Why? Why are you too friendly? Why? It's, it's very hard not to get jealous. I get jealous. It's, it's, it's just a thing. Uh, jealousy, it's, it's healthy to, in small doses, it's healthy. If now jealousy, you, you know, you're going to take it to the max. Now you're following them. Now you don't want them interacting with any females and males or whatever. You don't want them, whatever, whatever. You're stalking them. You're doing this. You're checking out every single female he interacts with on social media. You're going on the program. Then it's unhealthy. But is it jealous? Is it, is it, is it okay to have that little bit of jealousy? Like, I don't like the way that girl is talking to you. I really don't. Blah, blah, blah. Yes. It shows that you care. It shows that you want your partner for you. You want them to be with you, for you, you know? And, 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 and things like that don't make you happy. Can you imagine you're with somebody and you're always talking to boys and you're out talking to guys all the time. Guys are interacting with you on your social media and you're interacting back with them. And he's just like unfazed. Unfazed. Nick's door. Unfazed. That's where the danger is. He's unfazed because he doesn't care. He doesn't care. And someone who doesn't care, then they don't care to lose you. Much like they wouldn't care to keep you if anything happens. So no. No, no, no. It's healthy. It's healthy. It's healthy. Just don't... Go crazy. Don't go crazy. What I do, what do I do if my all my relationships end because I'm a virgin and I'm not ready to do the deed? I'm 29 years old. Then they end. Then they end. If you're not ready to do the deed, you're not ready to do the deed. And you shouldn't ever put yourself in a compromising situation just to keep a relationship. Hell no. If you are not ready, let it end because the person... Who will want to wait for you to do the deed? Will you come? They will come and they will wait for you. So you're 29 and you're a virgin. And then this shouldn't even be anything that should be, oh my God, you're 29, you're a virgin? What the hell? What are you waiting on? No. It's your body. It's your life. It's your choice. So if they end because they don't want to wait until you are ready, let them end. Let them end. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. It's sex is sex, but honestly, at the end of the day, it's sex is sex. To people who know, it's just sex. It's like that, 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 that whatever moment of pleasure, and then boom, you continue with life. You, you go back. So if you're not ready, you're not. And it's okay. I'm tired of being single, but I can't bring myself to dating again. It's been four years. The thought exhausts me, but you're tired of being single then you must unexhaust yourself. I can tell you that for free, and I know this girl, I know her. I can tell you that for free, unexhaust yourself because you have to get into dating to potentially get into a relationship. 
The thought of it is exhausting. Yeah, man, I said it in one of my videos that dating is exhausting. It's true. It's exhausting. But how you expect to get into a relationship? If you're not going to go through talking stages and doing all these other things and doing all these other things, how do you expect to get into a relationship? No, girl. Uh-uh. Stop. Stop it. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Okay? Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Okay, that's pretty much all I've got for this advice with cat i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you wanted me to do another advice with cat tell me the topic tell me what you'd like me to talk about or if you have questions for my next advice with cat put them in the description below not the description put them in the comment section down below or dm me on instagram i always keep them so that i can do my next one so that's about it i hope you enjoyed this video advise the, the girlies in the comment section below please advise the girlies if you feel like i haven't advised them enough or if i haven't advised them the right way let's advise each other let's empower each other i'm gonna go until the next advice with cat i'll see you very very soon until then sayonara